In today's video, I want to go over three secrets in the HVAC industry when it comes to diagnosing heating and air problems. When you call a heating and air technician out or company out and they're diagnosing that system, some of these secrets I'm going to give you may surprise you. Let's dive into it. The top three secrets when companies are diagnosing heating and air problems. Number one, companies misdiagnose systems all the time and the problem is you may not even know it. And I'll give you a good example. I actually had a company years ago. I had a friend that had called me and told me what was going on with this heating and air system, told me what the technician had told him. And I told him that did not sound correct. In the midst of all of this, make a long story short. In fact, I did a video on this you should check out. I basically called the technician. He didn't answer. And so then I called his boss. I called the, the company. And while I was talking to his boss, the technician dialed in and please watch that video. I'll put a link to it right up here. In summary, the boss was telling me, oh yeah, we do know how to put those systems in charging mode. I'm sure he did. And I was telling his boss, I don't think he did based on what I'm hearing, the way he diagnosed the system based on what he's telling me, there's no way the part he's saying is bad is what's wrong with this system. And what was crazy is the technician dialed in. I three weighed him in with his boss. And I said to the technician, Hey, did you put it in charging mode? And he said, what's charging mode. And so I said, okay, well, obviously you didn't put it in charging mode. So anyway, check that video out. If you haven't seen it, the moral of the story is in that particular scenario, the system ended up being low on refrigerant and that's what the actual problem was. And he had told my friend that the reversing valve was bad. Now here's what would have happened. They would have charged my friend all this money to replace a reversing valve that was not bad. They would have charged the system up with refrigerant afterwards. So the system would have looked or appeared to be working properly only to leak out that refrigerant again and then continue to have problems after that. And so that misdiagnosis would have actually looked like a correct diagnosis. Another example would be, I actually had a guy call me the other day that I'm teaching and he told me that they had replaced a board and that the new board was bad. And I said, tell me what's going on. And I remember he got in on a big huffy puff that I was questioning him and making him go back through. But the bottom line is when you say a part is bad, I want to know 100% that that part is bad. I want to do tests and let's make sure that that board is bad. If you're saying that board is bad and make a long story short, the board ended up not being the problem, but I see it all the time. Misdiagnosis on systems. They replace parts, parts that are not being tested properly. Another good example of this would be TXVs are misdiagnosed all the time. What do you do as a homeowner? The only thing I think you can do in most cases is to get a second opinion. When someone tells you something is bad, get a second opinion on that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but let's go ahead and jump to number two. The second thing would be warranties. So you have a system that is under warranty and the technician has diagnosed something as bad needs to be replaced. And the secret is that warranties don't cover what you think they cover, right? And so the best analogy I can use is if you were to go buy a brand new car and that car is under warranty, and let's say that car were to have a problem, you take it to the dealership and they say, hey, this part has failed. And in a lot of cases, that part is completely covered. The labor to put it in is covered. Any materials or let's say fluids, let's say the radiator went bad and now you've got to fill that radiator back up with antifreeze and all the parts and fixings and labor and everything that is involved with replacing that part that is under warranty. In most cases at dealerships on a car is going to be covered with heating and air systems. Unfortunately, that is not the case. A lot of things are not covered, even if the part did fail from the manufacturer. I'll give you a good example. If there were to be a part that failed in the refrigerant system anywhere that let's say the compressor fails. Now you've got the compressor that the warranty would cover. The manufacturer would give you that, but now you've got a plethora of materials to get that compressor replaced, including the brazing materials, the nitrogen, of course, your oxy and acetylene to braze everything in. You've got your filter dryer and on and on and on. 
and none of that's covered. And then the other big ticket item that is usually not covered is also the refrigerant. My point in telling you all this and the protection that I would just throw out there that you might look into is there are companies that offer extended warranties that might cover the labor, that might cover the refrigerant and so on. And that might be something you might wanna consider. That's something that my company always offered. It was an extra, it was a, an upgrade, but they could purchase an extended warranty that would cover everything in the event that there were a part failure. So warranties, unfortunately, from the manufacturer cover very little in some cases. They just cover the part. They don't cover the refrigerant, the labor, and the materials to put that part in. And then finally, number three, is that technicians will sometimes misdiagnose things on purpose. And this is probably no big secret. Unfortunately, there are some bad apples in our industry that in some cases they make us all look bad. Some of these folks are known as scammers or they're known as just dirty individuals. And they'll sometimes tell folks that there are things that are bad when they're not bad. We talked about it earlier in this video. What can you do as a consumer? the homeowner, and I think your biggest protection is to get other opinions, obviously. I would not tell the other opinions of the guy that was there first what his opinion was. Reason being, if you get another bad apple in there and you tell them, hey, this other guy said the compressor's bad, he wants to sell me a new system, well, the next guy that's a bad apple may feel the same way. Ooh, he's right, the compressor is bad. We had a customer call us not long ago where they said the same thing. They said, hey, I've got a, a company telling us the compressor's bad. Can you give us a second opinion? And immediately I asked them a few questions and I knew something wasn't right right away. And the reason was they told me that it works sometimes, that it was working intermittently, that there were times that it would work okay, other times it would not. It ended up being a low voltage issue with one of the components, but the first company was telling them that that compressor was bad and they were trying to sell them a new system just based on the age of the system. And so again, I think that if you have a company tell you that something's wrong, get a second opinion and just don't tell the next company. I don't wanna tell you what the first company told me is wrong. I want you to just give me a fresh new opinion on what is wrong with this system. And let's see if they match up. Let's see if there's something else crazy going on. I don't think that that's being rude or anything. You're just being upfront, telling that second company, hey, I need somebody to be honest with me here. And I'm just not getting the warm fuzzies from the folks I'm dealing with. So that's my big three, three secrets when it comes to diagnosing heating and air systems. Let me know your thoughts. Have you ever ran into any of these issues or do you have another secret that I have not shared? Please share that down in the comments section. We'd love to hear about that. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I explain ductwork sizing like no one has explained before. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.